Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, so hi, hi everyone. I'm Adrian. Um, uh, today I'll be talking about um, how we use um, search kit um, at Noteflare to build some of the search features. So um, to give a quick introduction, right? I think that's, you, can, you can reach out to me on those platforms. And I'm also a co-founder of Noteflare. And I, occasionally I write um, technical articles. So um, yeah. So, so I think to give an introduction, right? Um, so anyone here of Noteflare? Okay. Yeah, good. So um, so we are kind of a tech career super app where uh, every month we help like more than 75,000 uh, tech talents grow uh, their career. So what they do is that they come to our platform to uh, look for um, jobs, um, verified salaries, uh, insights, blogs, and a lot of other stuff. So when we first start, when we a year ago, we wanted to build this feature on the home page, right? Which let us search across uh, multiple uh, models. Um, so like your company, your salaries and jobs, everything with one um search bar. So that that was one of the problems that we were trying to solve, and because we wanted it to be responsive, we kind of have a the requirement that it must load within a few milliseconds. And at the same time, we also want it to be like cost efficient, right? We don't we don't want it to be like spending hundred plus dollars on like AWS to like every, every day to build uh, build this. And there are also other like some bonuses uh, that we aim to have. So for example, um, let's say um we want to do recommendation, but I think there are also some data cleaning portion like um if React React not JS should be the same as React JS, uh, and like some company like Java Space Script should be the same as Java Script. Because all, all of this information are from companies. So we have to account for all these edge cases. And a huge bonus is that it, if it works with our existing current implementation, right? So we are using Ruby on Rust uh, and your typical active record and Postgres for the database. So these are the requirements that we have when we try to look out for like what, what we are trying to build here. So I think before we actually build this, right, we have this setup where like um, the the front end can call the API to the server and then the server can fetch the data from Postgres. But I think we realize that um, it is not fast enough and it is, it, there's some limitations to tell how easy is it to configure the search and results. So technically you can use Postgres, but we realize that it is too painful and it might not be the best tool. Lah. So we kind of thought about, okay, maybe um, we try to look out for other um, database that supports this, and one of them is Elasticsearch. And when doing the research, I kind of come across, came across this uh, gem uh, called Search Kit, where it's sort of an Elasticsearch wrapper for like your Ruby on Rails. So before I deep dive into that, I can have some disclaimer, right? So this talk, I try to keep it simple and brief. So I'll be talking about how to implement some of the simple search features and what, how you can configure and uh, the different options that comes pre-built with the gen. But what I will not be talking about is that why we didn't choose the alternative and like um, how we, how how to set up Elasticsearch or how to optimize and scale it up. So I think those are not so core for this talk. And because we built this a year around, a, a year back, right? So I think the question that we have is that like, uh, is it something that, uh, like, have, have we made the right decisions? And so far, the decision is yes, based on like the situation right now, but it might be no in the future. But as of now, for the past one year, it has worked pretty well for us. So I think that's, that's good. Okay, so back, back to it, right? So how does Elasticsearch actually work in this case is that um, it's as though you have another database. So how we use it is that uh, we index some data that we want to um, do a very efficient search uh, from the Postgres database to the Elasticsearch database. So the reason why we don't just index all the data is that um, we don't actually need all the information. Like there are a lot of like, models, but we, maybe we only need for like two of them. So if we index everything, it will be unnecessary cost and stuff. So we only index what we need. So the very basic of it, right, is that um, when you for to for start right, it's just including the search key and elastic search uh, gem in in your gem file, 
and then uh like it's bundle installing it. And uh let's say you want to use this search across the model like um job listing in our case, you just have to add the keyword search kit to the model. So what happens next is that we can run the command like job listing dot index, right? And then it will index everything. That's by default. So I can touch on um uh, later. On. And when you have to retrieve the information, it's very similar to like your active record where you just do a, a find by or like where and then you look through the results. So it's very simple. Actually, you can set up everything with less than like 10 lines of code uh, for the very basic stuff. So how does it work behind the scenes, right? So for those that are familiar with like active record, it's sort of like a wrapper for your uh, like relational database, right? Like you write like uh, something dot where what it does is that it becomes a uh, SQL query. So it's, in this case, it's very similar. So if you look at the example, I type something like job listing dot search Java. What it actually goes behind the scenes is that it converts it into a, a query for uh, Elasticsearch that it will cause the uh, the endpoint. So a lot of a lot of the things are extracted away for simplicity. So some of the query options that um that are very useful um, and I would say covers quite a bit of the use cases. Uh, the simple one like uh, which field do you want to search across? So for example, maybe a job listing has a title, a description and a lot of things. But maybe we only want to search through the description. So we can just indicate which field we search through. And we also can indicate like uh, some constraint, right? Only search like if it's an intern or junior, like very straightforward things. Uh, you can refer to the documentation, but uh, it's the syntax is very similar to your active record. Yeah, so and so in some cases, we realize that we might want to boost the scoring for certain fields. So, for example, if I want to search for like um um uh, API engineers, right? I will want a job listing with API engineer in the title to rank higher than one API engineer in the description because it's more, more likely a more accurate uh, result. So it's, it's similar to when you are Googling something, right? Like the title of the page is a lot more important than like, the H2, H3, and the content. So in this case, I'm not sure whether you all can see. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to move here. Okay. So we we may do with this like this the <laughs> nice Um. So yeah. So we can use the boost by field over there to uh, uh, we can use the fields there to indicate like uh in the case of title we want to have like ten times the scoring if the terms Java appear here. Yeah. And may maybe let's say we want to like boost certain companies like maybe they are the more popular companies. You can also indicate that, okay, this company ID, if, if the company ID is like one, uh, make it 10 times, uh, rank 10, 10 times higher or something along the line. And we can even boost by recency. So for example, job posting, right? Like you might want to prioritize and show the users like those that are like more like posted this week compared to like two months ago. So those are some of the fields where you can boost your results. And lastly, and the next part is pagination. I think this part, this is very similar to some of the pagination gem that are very common, like terminary and like word paginate. And it works with those two. So um yeah, it works very um like very well with those. So you, you don't have to configure anything as well. Alright, so the default match, right, is that um when you search for something, it will match the entire word. So for example, if you type Java, JavaScript should then comes up. But there might be instances where you determine that um, you want, as long as the starting of the word match, it match. So you can use uh, the word start to indicate that 
So in those case, JavaScript also comes up. So there are a list of options that you can use to determine like, what are the maximum options. And this, this is something that I quite like, particularly as in is that you can also do something called the similarity search, where you can just indicate that, okay, I want to find job listing. Once you have a record, I want to find similar listings based on the different fields. So this is an example that we kind of had, right? I took a screenshot that of what we built, where uh, a job posting site, we kind of have the similar jobs. And those are matched. In our case, we use like things like head stack and like, Seniority always to make the similar jobs. Yeah. So um it works like out of the box, especially if you don't want to customize a lot of things. Yeah. And you don't have to add you don't have to add in another gem or build your own recommendation engine from, from scratch. Right? Okay, so the next part is that um when you query something from um like Elasticsearch this way, right? Like, what it does is that actually it gets the ID uh, of all the records from Elasticsearch, then it will get it will fetch those records from post post in our case to get the other information. But what this means is that it's a two like a uh, request, right? So that if you want, you can call the load false keywords. So it will take all the information from the Elasticsearch server. And the pros is that you save on like one request and um like it, it works independently from your Postgres uh database. But the cons is also that you must make sure that all the information that you need in this space are stored in the Elasticsearch. It might incur more cost. And because Elasticsearch is sort of like a copy of your like your main database, right? What you might be fetching is might be potentially a still like record. So those are the cons uh, by doing so. So there are also cases, I think previously I was, I was sharing that by default you will index every single field in a, like a model. So let's say your job posting has like salary, titles, you know, I mean, it, by default you will index everything. But sometimes maybe you don't need all of it. So you can indicate which are the ones that um, you want to uh, index. So this could save you some space and cost. In addition, if let's say, um, maybe a job listing has some like associations, right, with like, um, head stats and everything. So you might want to search through a head stat. So in this case, you can, you can indicate that, look, um, uh, Elasticsearch, please help me to index those fields also. So, uh, this will make something uh, easier when you do that. Okay, so back to what we are trying to build, right? Because we are trying to search uh, across the different like uh, models, like jobs, salaries, companies, blog posts, basically like four or five models. We didn't want to like call like four or five API just for one search term. So very nicely, uh, search can also have this thing called a uh, multi-search where you can just indicate like what are the different things that you want to bundle into one query and then they will fetch them. And then the results will be one or uh, one JSON. I think what I'm not sure what's the result, but it's one uh one object that's written. And then you can uh, search through that. Yeah. So in that case, especially useful for us that like we are saving like four or five <laughs> um like requests or search. Like. Mm. So there are other options that uh, we didn't quite use a lot, but I think will be quite interesting in this case. And one of these highlights. So you know sometimes when you Google for something, some of the terms are like both um, based on like what you are searching. So highlights essentially does the same and it will return you the query the results with the HTML uh, included in it. So you can just display it easier. So the default is highlight but you can also configure it to be like both or like other font formatting. And it also comes with like standing which is um, you a uh, concept for like search engine where like you try to pre clean up um many the 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 fields based on like the I item. I'm not quite sure how to explain this, but yeah, I think it's quite straightforward. <laughs> yeah, and lastly, there's a aggregation that is quite um quite nice as well because when you search something, it will, it will tell you that 
oh, under these uh, attributes, you have how many of these items. So let's say you are building an e-commerce store or a search engine where you want to display how many search results per field, uh, it actually comes, comes to that thing. Yeah. So that's about the features that, like some of the core features of search kit. So I will talk about some issues that we face when we're building it that we sort of get burned. So let's say a, mod, like a model has an association from another model, right? When the, like, the second model is updated, it does not automatically re-index the, the first model. So what this means is that let's say a drop listing has a multiple text stats. And if you update a text stat, it does not automatically re-index that in the job listing. So this is something to take note. You have to write a method to sort of do a, a callback uh, like method to um, get them to get the job listing to re -index. So yeah, it's, it's, it's also not very clear in the documentation, but we, we have to figure out the hard way. Like. Second is that we are determining how to re-index, how often to re-index, right? because essentially like your Elasticsearch is a copy of your post rest, like it's like similar to concept to your cache. Like you don't want to keep updating it because it's, it's expensive, but you also don't want to update like um like two liters such that the data goes here. So it really depends on your use cases. So for our case where like we have like um salaries or jobs, right? Like and the salaries is based on like user submissions and job posting. You guys that um using a a refresh rate of like five minutes will do the job. So uh we switch to that instead. And lastly is that um when we first started like we were index re indexing the whole like database, right? And it seems to be working fine. But as we grow across the months, we start to realize that some of the re indexing are failing because um they are sending such a big like request to the Elasticsearch server and our Elasticsearch server, the instance can't can't take that um like request. So a lot of the re index uh, like uh jobs were failing. So one of the way that we overcome is that okay, instead of like um let's say you got a hundred jobs, right? Like, instead of like indexing the all hundred at once, we split it into like maybe a bundle of ten. So one to nine, one to ten, eleven to twenty, and then we index by batches. So that will reduce the load um on your server also. Yeah. So yeah, I think come to the end of the presentation. Thanks for um listening. Uh yeah, I hope I hope it's been useful. Uh. Yeah. So I think now's the Q and A time.